Okay, first I'm going to start teaching my, who do you put your trust in? You know, who, who, you, who you trust more? Are you trusting man more than you trust God? This, this is something to examine yourself with. I'm not trying to get in there. Let's turn to Jeremiah 17. Let's see where we're at now. And by the time we get ready to leave, I pray that I pray to God that some of you really examine yourself and say, who do I call upon more than when I'm in trouble? Who I'm putting my trust in? Am I picking up? That's why I tell you, don't be calling me for everything. Go to God for yourself. I got to pray for myself. If something happened to me, then what you going to do? You know, don't be coming running to me because I ain't God. Go to God. Know how to go to God for yourself. And then you learn to appreciate when he start answering your prayers. I had to get there. You're going to have to get there, too. There's nothing wrong with you call a pastor for something. Sure, you need to call me if something's going on and you need uh, me to know about it and want to pray about it. That's fine. But don't just take on yourself and say, oh, let me call a pastor. I think I went over to the bathroom. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm so constipated. Maybe I need to. You better get on that toilet and pray for yourself. <laughs> don't be wasting my time. To Trying to make you make your, come on. <laughs> oh, God. Turn to Jeremiah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. People call for the craziest thing. Something that I, can, I look at the phone, I'll be like, I can't believe they call me for that. So I try to be nice, you know, because this is being a pastor. You got to treat everybody nice, you know. And, and you know, I try to be nice. God knows I do. But sometimes I have to look at that phone. <laughs> Some of the things they ask for prayer for, it don't make no sense. It's wasting your time. And it's no, it's no call for it. Jeremiah 17, verse 5, read like this here. Thus said that our curse be the man that trusts in man and make flesh his arm whose heart depart from the Lord. <clears throat> for he shall be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the porch places in the wilderness in a salt land not inhabit. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. That's a powerful. That's very powerful. You know, many of you are not, <clears throat> I won't say you because I don't know, but many people, I think all oh, you kind of get on the right, but many people ain't going no further than they're going because they, they, they have, their heart has departed from God. And, and they, 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 at one time, they call on God, they pray about everything, and God, they wanted this and they wanted that, and they render God for everything. But then they're getting caught up in the world like, so what they do, they don't pray like they used to pray. They don't ask God for what they want. But they be like, oh, I wonder, God, you're going to do it. And, uh, uh, and by the time it goes around, where well, it must run for me, you didn't even pray to ask God then. You didn't trust him to do it for you. Come on now, come on. And see, the enemy have now creeped in on many of us here. And now started out our minds all out there in other areas, in the field, like they're doing everything else. But calling on God. You got to know how to call on God. Say amen. Say amen. Listen to what he says. That man that hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the water that spread out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. It's nothing like you being right with God, trusting God, and yielding fruit for God. You should be so mindful of him and praying up and, you know, because you don't know who needs you when you're out there. Somebody on your job may need you and your family may need you. But if you got your mind out there and I wonder, I wonder why Gwen didn't answer the call when I wanted her to pray with me. You go, Gwen ain't got to be there. You need to know how to go to God for yourself. You need to know how to pray and say, God, I need an answer from you. I need, if you don't do it, I'm going to just say, Lord, help me. Just help. That's all. He's right there. Sometimes you don't know what to say, but God, I'm coming. You just help me now because I'm going through something. How many of you got to a place you just need God to help you? And you didn't know what to pray for, but you just said, Lord, help me now because it's really hard now. I don't know. I don't know. You're coming to me. I, be, I need help. I had to go to God this morning. You understand what I'm saying? you come to me. Help me. We got to go to God and know how to go to and trust him to hate bring us through. Yeah, some of y'all looking at me so funny. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Psalm 34. Let's go there. Ha, ha, ha. I hope y'all really get to get closer to God. We live in some evil times, people. And we need to start drawing to God more than anything or anybody else. And I don't care how much you sit in this church. You have not arrived, neither have I. We still need God. Amen. I said we need God more now than we ever did. Say amen. 
I mean, it's, it's really some stuff going on in this world. Some stuff you don't even know about. <laughs> that enemy is sneaking. He's not making you think you all that. And you got a few words, you know, for the Lord is my shepherd. You think that little word, that's it. <laughs> don't know. Yes, what about verse? I know he's my shepherd. <laughs> you, got need, you need some more word in you. So when the evil times come, you know how to, you got something to stand on. Say amen. 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 When they put me through that turn of MRI, I was like, close my eyes. There were strips I could think about. I ain't opened up my eyes. I was calling on God in that tunnel. I can't take that. I don't like that thing. And the lady said to me, you all right? I said, I'm going to be all right because God with me. Amen. I went in there with Jesus. Amen. amen. You got to know who to go when you who with you. Amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Okay, Psalm 34, verse. Oh, <coughs> mm -mm, the one I. Oh, yeah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. How many of you know God? You don't taste how good he is. How many of you know God have done something for you? How many of you know God done done something for you? So if he done done something, why would you want to go back to the fifth and eat up the stuff that, how many, uh, come on now. See, the world make everything look really good. Bright lights, fast living. And then, you know how you come on you? When you're weary. When you feel like you just don't need to make it no more. And you know, he's tempting. He will send somebody around just to tempt you. Let me tell you something. I, see, I watch this stuff. Here, this person didn't know. I know him. But I was in the bank at the, at the, at the um, credit union today. And I was standing there. And I'm looking at him. He didn't know I saw him. And he was looking at this woman like. <laughs> I mean, he got on down like that. I was like. So I tried to hide back because I didn't want him to. <laughs> oh, bitch, are you here? I'm like. <laughs> So I, 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 I tried to act like I just walked in here. But I saw him all. He was down. I never seen a man been down looking at a woman. But he looked at her. I was like, so I was here back. And he, <laughs> let me go here. <laughs> you don't never know who's watching you. You better be careful. You're going to la 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 shaka baka all day. But you better make sure. <laughs> you better keep your eyes on Jesus. <laughs> Oh, hey, Bishop. I didn't know you. I said, I'll just come here, baby. I'm okay. I want to tell you, you better get your eyes off that woman. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I went home laughing. I said, God, that's how people fall. Some of the best people fall. Some of the best preachers fall. Best leaders fall. You better hear what I'm talking about. It don't make a difference how much you know. You better keep your eyes on the Lord. I lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help. And all my help cometh from the Lord. See, none of us has arrived. There was a little something in all of us. Ain't nobody going to look at no ugly person, but something good. You. <laughs> Many of y'all turn your head and look, you may not look like he did. <laughs> okay. Verse 22 in the same Psalm 34. The Lord redeemed the soul of his servant, and none of them that trust in him shall be destined. See, one thing about God, when you trust him for something, he going to do it. He may not come when you want him, but he going to be on time. How many of you know you're going to ask God for something, and you waiting on him, and you trusting him, and the Bible don't get weary and well done? I'm telling you, God going to do what he says. I said, God, how many, how many can I just get an amen here? God going to do what he said. He's not going to have you trust in him. Not one of his words going to fall. He's going he gonna to bring it to pass. How many of you know, if you trust in God, just keep on waiting on him. Those that wait upon the Lord, come on now, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings like an eagle. They shall run and don't get weary. See, when you trust in God and you're waiting on him, he gives you strength to keep waiting on him. He gives you able to walk and know that I'm getting what he promised me. See, I know what he's going to do for me. See, I know, I know who my redeemer is. Come on, do you know who your redeemer is? Do you know who he... When you know who he is, you don't have to take no any old thing. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm happy tonight. I don't know about y'all, but I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't have to listen to Kurt Franklin to be happy. I'm happy anyhow. Because <laughs> I don't taste and I see how good God is. And I, don't, I, I remember the time I didn't have to have nothing to eat. But I got a hold to Jesus. 
He changed my life. I've been walking with him 32 years, and I'm nowhere tired. It just gets sweeter and sweeter. And I'm not going to let no devil, with the help of God, steal this joy I got. Y'all better hear me. I, listen here. You can't afford to miss out the good benefits that God has for you. Oh, Taylor, he got benefits for you. Every, they knew every morning. How you all going to trust God and just say, God going to give me my heart desire? You know what? That, I never seen a righteous forsaken. Now his seed seeds begging for prayer. God gonna bless you and your seeds and your seeds seeds. Come on, cause you trust in the Lord. He will not let one of your bones be broken. Come on in. I, y'all don't get. I'm feeling good up in here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm feeling good. I, I say I'm feeling good. Turn thirty, turn thirty-seven. Hallelujah. See, I had to, I had to go to God for myself. I had to really trust in Him. Because everybody was coming against me. Oh, you're a lady. You'll never have a billing. You'll never have this. You'll never have that. And I said, God, I know you're going to do something for me because the people's mouths is on me. Nobody want to see me. Make. How many of you know that when your enemy is coming against you and you don't know nobody else to do when your back is against a wall and everybody's throwing attack at you and you're saying, God, if you don't do it, it just won't be done. But I'm going to trust you anyhow. Though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. I don't know what other way to go. I don't know no other way. And I'm not going to let people now put me down. I'm not going to turn away from you because I knew you were going to bring me through. <laughs> Somebody better get happy up in here today. I'm telling you, verse 37, verse 3, Psalm 37, verse, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell, dwell in the land, and bread that I shall be fed. God, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't lying here. The light that suffers to the Lord, he shall give thee the desire. Who are you delighting yourself in? Who are you delighting yourself in? God said, if you delight yourself in him, he will give you him. He will give you desires of your heart. My desire is I want what God has. If it ain't God, I don't want it. I don't want it. See, I said earlier, everything looked like gold ain't gold. Now, God knows this. And the devil hear your prayer. He'd be like, let me see, can I send a phony over there? A counterfeiter. And they come sit right beside you. <laughs> and they know all the cons. They know how to talk to you, sweet. I'm trusting God. He's going to bring me a husband, bring me a wife. And the devil said, yeah, go over there to love of Jesus. They sitting there waiting on you. <laughs> oh, I got hate my cry. <laughs> Lord, he heard my cry. I didn't know who was going to answer this prayer so fast. <laughs> devil setting you up, baby. You better know that you know that you know if it is, if it ain't. Because everything look like ain't it, ain't it. <laughs> let me, let me move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Psalm 40. All right. That goes for somebody up in here. I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praises unto our God. Men shall see it and fear. And shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that made the Lord his trust. And respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. See, I want to read living and go back and forth, but for time's sake, I'm getting ready. Go on. And I'm going to take up this next week. I'm going to take it up next week because I got a lot here. I got five different principal things. I may just get with the fear, but next week I get with the others. But. God has showed me something about man. There's, that man is just, Jeremiah said that they're deceitful and wicked. Who knows the heart of man? You don't know. And God started speaking to me about some things. What's the day? Tuesday. It must have been Thursday or Friday last week. And when I was going, it was Thursday, when I was going to Oliver Harris' funeral and how he went away from here so fast. And God said to me, he went to the hospital to get a test. And they couldn't give the test, the cholesterol test, because his cholesterol was so high. And <clears throat> by the time his daughter went to go get a coffee, he just eased right on out of here. By the time she came back, he was gone. And God said to me, he says, you never know 
while you around here trying to get this, do that, and that, keep your mind stayed on me. He said, because you don't never know when that clock is ticking, and you're going to tick right on out of here. So it brought me even closer to God through his death. It made me change. I'm, I'm changed. I'm not the same. Through all of the death, it made me be more, want me to be more like him. Listen to me. There's some things that's happening, and I'm beginning to see how real death is. And I want, I want to be right. Because there's some people that left. I want to see them when I get there. Come, come on now. Come on now. So I got to give God my all now. Two more months, I'll be 75 years old. I ain't got no time to be playing with nobody. No ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't check on my bell. I got to. Y'all didn't hear me. While you trying to get something going there, you better be trying to get your soul right with God. Because you don't never entrust God to take every day you wake up and say, Lord, I thank you for letting me see another day. I magnify you for letting me see another day. I glorify you for letting me see another day. I put my trust in you, God. You don't want me to see another day. Get in your car and say, Lord, I thank you for driving my car. Thank you for giving my car. Enable me to go down this road. Despite your angels that go before me. See, we're forgetting about the principal thing that we should be doing. We're getting and just go. On the phone and everything else. You better watch because the devil is sneaky. He's trying to sniff you out of here. But God says to me, he's sniffing at you like wheat. Oh, God, y'all got me hell here. He's sifting at us like wheat. Not one day, but every day. Get your soul right with God. I don't know. Oh, no, there's something happening to me here. Woo! I ain't got no time to waste. I ain't got no time. I ain't playing no games. Woo! No, 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 we need it. It's too many religious spirits. Being religious ain't doing it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. See, God wants us sold out for him. Now, he knows us. He knows us. He knows us. <laughs> and when you walk around and trying to be and speaking in tongues and winking at somebody, that ain't, you better watch it. Because, see, that wicked one will be cut off. That's why many people are falling fast today. One thing, you shouldn't play with God. I'm not going to stand up and preach and leave out of here and go home and say, when everybody go to bed, you stop by. Ain't nobody putting their shoes under my bed. No, no, no. Uh-uh, see, it ain't, it ain't all that. Let me go ahead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes the street try to come up, but it's okay. Because, I, you know, you know what? I, I, sometimes I think about why I said to God one day, I said, Lord, you always give me messages of, like, encouraging and edifying and all that. He said, well, you, the people that I bring to you, I have to give you that because they need that. And then I was saying to the Lord yesterday, I say, a lot of people, it's a lot of worship and stuff. Mm -hmm. But y'all be standing up and about to go to sleep because y'all don't know about the worship right now. Mm -hmm. on, I got to give you something that's going to keep you on, in tune with God. Amen. Y'all don't hear what I'm trying to say. See, you got to grow into that. Amen. See, and a lot of people come here, they, they may not understand why the music we play and the way we do things here, God put it in my spirit because many of you all, you wouldn't last in here in this house being in the hood. Come on now. If I didn't give you what I give you to make you know that, that this thing is real. And God have kept me to be where I am today so that I can give you what he He's a keeper if you want to be kept. Don't give me that. He'll keep him. All right now. Psalm 62 verse 8. When you get to say amen. We're still talking about trust. Trust in the Lord at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge. Listen, he's our refuge. Pour it out to him. Please, no talking or walking around. Y'all, everybody need this here. Everybody. See, the devil don't want you to get it. That's one thing I know. He, he wants you to start doing stuff so that you miss it. 
Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a what? He is a refuge. He is er it and everything else. See, th listen, you know what? And that's why I'm tightening in here now. When I'm te te talking and preaching, I don't want no running around, no talking, no nothing. It's very distracting. Somebody may want it. You may not, but somebody else do. That's why you got to see. Sit down. All right? Trust not in oppression because not vain in robbery. It's riches, if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. See, a lot of people going after money, money, money. And they're taking their mind off of God. Because it's all about money now. A young lady talked to me today. Oh, I'm getting this money. I'm a, you just don't know. You're going to be so blessed. And you're gonna bring. I said, listen, if it ain't from God, you ain't got to worry about it. I said, but it's God, I, fine with it. Because I know God going to give me a million. I said, you don't miss what you ain't got. So you ain't, you're not going to come in. <laughs> You're not going to have me have getting something and then I got to be marched out my church with handcuffs. <laughs> See, you got to know where the gift come from. Yeah. See, the devil know I've been saying I'm getting a million, so he's sending somebody in here going to give me all this money, but you got to be careful. And then when I say that, when you praying and asking God for something, you better be careful because you don't know, you better know if it's God or not. And don't get so caught up on finances. You need all this money. Because, see, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. That's the Bible. You use money. God, we need money. Who don't need money? If you didn't need money, nobody would be working. Nobody would be doing nothing. Money just be dropping out the sky. Go pick it off the tree. But you, you have to. You, we need money. And God said he'll supply all our needs. So I'm looking to God. And you should look to God and trust God to meet all your needs. Amen. See, one thing I say, who's the twin in the Bible is faith. Faith and works is twins. One can't do without the other. You got faith, then put your works with it. See, they both co come together. When God tells you to do something, just get to do what God tells you. Keep the faith, baby, and see when God bring the path. Because you're working at it, you got the faith to know he's going to do it, and God will do it. How many of you know he will do it? Amen. Let's move on. All right. All right. Psalm 118, verse 189. I'm, I'm talking about theosity. I'm talking about trust. Say amen. amen. How many of you have fade away from trusting God? The, verse 6, the Lord is on my side. I would not fear. What can man do unto me? <laughs> the Lord is on, verse 6, 118. The Lord is on my side. I want to go up. I heard someone say, forward to me. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. Okay? I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. God loves when you call on him. You know why he loves when we call on him and trust him? Because you got some haters out there. You got some people that want to see you make it. Come on now. I'm going to bring it to you strong now. You got some people out there. And God say, if you just come on and call on me, I'm going to show you them haters. I'm going to show them people that put in their mouth. You come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. See, we know we wrestle not against faith, but there's spirits that get in people that don't want to see you make it. Everybody ain't going to celebrate you when you get blessed. Everybody's not going to be with you when you be blessed. Y'all ready? Oh, come on, say amen. See, there are some people that don't want to see you make it. And they will try everything. Oh, they grin in your face. I like they happy for you. Yeah. Oh, oh, Dick and Andre, I'm so happy for you. And they walk away. I wonder how he get there. What to make him? So God said, I see how they talking about you. And just because they talking about you, I'm just because, just because, I'm going to bless you anyhow. Come on here and give God another praise. God said, just because you trusted me and they talking about you, that's all right. Just because, I'm going to bless you anyway. So you don't know who you put your mouth on. Touch not God's anointing or do his prophet no harm. Because you will never know who God is raising up. You need to keep your mouth shut. Because the very one you put your mouth on, maybe the one out to help you. Come on, give God another praise here. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Woo, woo, woo. It says here, it, verse 8, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in a man. <laughs> I get amen? amen. <laughs> it's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in princes. <laughs> 
The Lord is my strength and song and become my salvation. See, when you know who your Redeemer is, you know, me and uh, Miss Bishop was talking today, and she was saying about this perfect love cast away all fear. Tonight, me and her was talking before I came. And I, I, I was kind of kind of getting to that. If, if perfect love casts out fear, it's a, me, it's a reason for that. Turn your Bible first. I'm, I'm, I have to go to this fear thing right here. Because, see, many of you don't understand what perfect love is. First John 4. First John 4, 18. Uh, that's in, that's on, on the fear, but I'm going to get back to it. I got a couple more in this, and I'm going to close. First John 4, 18. Now, someone read it in the uh, King James Version. Who want to read it? Somebody else, let's read it, Keith. 18, 418. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And the Living Bible said, we need have no fear of someone who loves us perfectly. His perfect love for us emanates all stress of what he might do to us. If we are afraid, it is for fear of what he might do to us and show that we are not fully confident that he really loves us. When you know he really loves you, it casts away all fear. Amen. This is what the next verse says. You see, our love for him come as a result of him loving us first. Amen. See, see, when you know he loves you, you ain't got to have no fear about nothing. Amen. When you know that God loves you, he loves you first, it should cast away all that other fear stuff. Because God loves me. I, there was a time I used to jump if I heard something squeak in the house because I was walking with the devil and he had all that fear on me. But now that I have the love of Christ and I know how much he loved me, it casts away all that fear. Come on now, did everybody get it? And that really, that really made me realize how much love that man has for us. You know, that, that, that fear is not from, see, God say he did not give you that spirit of fear. But love, power, and a sign mind. That's the love of God. Amen?